Genesis chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. We're going to read through verse number 10. Genesis chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, reading through verse 10. And the word of the Lord today from the King James text reads, And Adam knew Eve, his wife. I'm glad he knew her, because I'd hate to be married to somebody I didn't know. Yeah. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man child, a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought out of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought up the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. I want to talk to us today for a while on the topic, the best of the best. Amen. The best of the best. If you'll bow your heads with me one more moment. Father, once again, God, we come before you today, Lord, with grateful, humbled hearts. We're so grateful for the Word of God. We're so grateful today, Lord, that we need not fear your Word, but rather... We can go to your word with expectation and even with excitement, knowing that something good and positive and beneficial to our souls is able to come forth from this beautiful book. Master, in the name of Jesus, we ask God that you would anoint today the messenger of God. Anoint me in such a way, Lord, you've given me a powerful, wonderful message for the church of the living God at this hour. And I am unable to deliver it in a manner that is uh, in keeping with the glory and the splendor of your word. Outside of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Touch my heart, my mind, my lips. Touch today, O oh God, the hearing of every hearer. Those today in this room. Those who are listening and watching by reason of the internet. As well as those who will later listen and watch by reason of the internet. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God and amen. amen. We're familiar with the story of Cain and Abel. Most of us have uh, heard of this story. Even if you're an individual of Jewish background, this obviously comes from the Old Testament or the Pentateuch as it is called. The first five books of the Bible penned by Moses. And so most people have heard this story and we're familiar with the basics of this story. But today I want to read one verse from Hebrews chapter 11 written by the Apostle Paul to the Hebrew church concerning this very story. Paul writes to the Hebrews, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice then came, by which he obtained witness 
that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. You'll often hear preachers say that in the story of Cain and Abel in Genesis chapter 4, we see the beginnings of animal sacrifice that God would later establish uh, with the Jewish people through the Leviticus law, the Levitical law. And I'm here to tell you today, animal sacrifice was not established by God at the sacrifice of uh offered to the Lord by Abel, the concept and the perimeters of sacrifice were here demonstrated. But this had nothing to do with God. God did not ask Cain or Abel for either of their sacrifices. They did this of their own accord. They did this as a means of saying to the Lord, thank you for all that we have. Thank you for what you have given us. So God was not involved in requiring anything. So this is not the beginning of animal sacrifice, not by a million miles. But we do understand the parameters of sacrifice by looking at this story. You see, today many people do not understand the whole concept of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many people say, well, it's absurd that Christianity would teach that their God left heaven and became a man so that he could die and be offered as a sacrifice. What a horrible notion. What a hideous idea. And even many in the Christian church do not properly understand the concept of the sacrifice of Christ. They do not, they do not fully understand the notion that Jesus Christ was and is the Lamb of God slain Amen. from the foundations of the world. Amen. They don't understand this concept and it's an important concept to get. Yes. Amen. Folks, you'll never be able to shout in church. You'll never be able to get happy over this gospel if you don't understand how it was that Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God. If you don't understand what the entire concept of sacrifice really means. We look at the story of Cain and Abel and in this story we find that the parameters of sacrifice are set. Within the concept of uh, the story that we've read today, we find out, and through Paul's writing to the Hebrews in Hebrews 11 and 4, we find out that there are Three things that are essential to sacrifice. Now, y'all know me. I'm not a point A, B, C preacher, you know. I'm not one of them at a point one, point two, point three. I'm, no, I'd have to be Baptist to do that. I'm not Baptist. But there are three ingredients that are necessary to an acceptable sacrifice. You know, a lot of people, <laughs> i got to go here first. A lot of people love to say, oh, I've sacrificed so much for my husband, or I've sacrificed so much for my kids, or I've sacrificed so much for my job. You know, I've had to sacrifice. People love to use the term sacrifice. And they don't understand what the term sacrifice even means. Sacrifice, first and foremost, requires excellence. <laughs> You see, it isn't sacrifice if you do without something you can easily do without. Yeah. Right. You see, Cain brought the Lord a sacrifice of fruits and vegetables, things that he had gleaned from his garden. Now, later, God would establish the concept of tithing. And in the concept of tithing, in the Old Testament era, uh, men would bring to the Lord the first tenth, the ten percent, the first tenth of their crops, the first right. tenth of their vegetables and of their fruits. So why then would Cain's sacrifice not have been seen by God as excellent as he viewed that of Abel's? Well, it's easy. Because Cain could easily afford to give the Lord yeah. those vegetables, mm -hmm. 
and those fruits. But you see, when Abel brought before the Lord one of the sheep, Abel did not merely bring one of the sheep. He brought the best of the sheep. Amen. You see, animals in biblical times were of far greater value than fruits and vegetables could ever be. Because an animal not only represented uh, the food that the meat of that animal could produce, but also they represented any number of byproducts. They represented the wool from the lamb or the sheep. And that wool could be harvested from that lamb month after month, year after year, year after year. Clothing could be made from that wool. Hello now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Things could be done with that wool. That wool could be sold and sold for a profit in order to help support the home of the individual that owned the sheep. Not only did that lamb represent meat, not only did it represent byproduct in the form of the wool, but that animal also uh, is representative of one's wealth and prosperity. The wealthier someone was, the more prosperous they were, the more animals they were set to own. If you look at the story of Job in the Old Testament book of Job, you find that we're told all about how many animals he owned. Why are we told about how many him? We're not told that Job was a millionaire. We're not told that Job was a billionaire. See, in modern time, we talk about wealth in terms of money. We talk about how much money somebody has, what their net worth is. Well, the way that one would demonstrate in the Old Testament era the wealth and the prosperity of someone, they would talk about their holdings in animals, how many camels, how many horses, or not horses, how many llamas, or how many uh, cattle, or how many um, uh, sheep they had, or how many goats they had. This is how you would demonstrate somebody's wealth at that time. So what we understand about Abel is, Abel must have been pretty well to do. Because he chose to trade in animals rather than fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. You see, sacrifice requires excellence. Mm -hmm. You can't just give God something that you can easily do without. I love the concept that a lot of your high church folks have around Easter time. Oh, Lent. I'm going to give up chocolate for Lent. Well, i got news for you, honey. You can easily live without chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, but you don't understand how much I like chocolate. It doesn't matter how much you like chocolate. You don't need chocolate. There is no sacrifice whatsoever in offering to God something that is of little value to you. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? No, sacrifice requires excellence. And excellence requires that it be valuable. Not that it be merely one of many, but rather that it be the best of the best. If you look today at the illustration I have on the screen behind me, you see that somebody went to the state fair with their little lamb or their little, I think it's a lamb, and they went to the state fair with their little lamb and they won the blue ribbon. You go to the state fair and you win the blue ribbon. That means that your goat, or in this case, the purple ribbon, <laughs> means that your animal was the best of the best. He appeared the best. That your animal uh, demonstrated the best. Your animal, uh, to the naked eye, upon inspection, appeared to be the best example of that kind of animal that there is. Sacrifice requires excellence. Yes. Yeah. There are missionaries who go to foreign lands and they live on straw cots mm -hmm. and they sleep under thatched roofs. And here they are coming from America. Here they are coming from the United Kingdom. Here they are coming from an industrialized nation where they're accustomed to sleeping under a roof that is waterproof. And they're accustomed to sleeping on mattresses that are comfortable and inviting. 
and suddenly they find themselves called by God to go to a foreign land and they literally forfeit all the comforts of home. Not only for themselves, but for their children, for their wives. The entire family is making a great amount of sacrifice. Why? Because they are offering excellence. They are bringing something to God of excellence. They are giving God something of great value. They're not merely giving God something they can easily live without. That's right. Oh, I'm going to fast a meal. Well, big deal. I don't eat uh, three meals a day every day anyway. So fasting a meal really isn't that big a deal. Yeah. Fasting a meal, you know, any one of us can do that on any day of the week. It takes something different when you make the decision, I'm going to fast for a day or I'm going to fast for two or three days. That's a different ball of wax. Am I telling the truth today? Uh -huh. Sacrifice requires excellence. But there's something else that we don't think of oftentimes that sacrifice requires and if you read Hebrews 11 and 4, as I read to you a moment ago, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Part of what made Abel's sacrifice greater than Cain's sacrifice was the fact, listen to me now, that Abel offered it by faith. Yes, amen. Woo! Abel didn't just bring that sacrifice before God and lay it down on the ground and say, here you go, Lord, here it is. Yeah. No, he brought that sacrifice with faith in his spirit and faith yes. in his heart, yes. knowing, listen to me now, anything I give up for God, God is able to restore to me at a later date. Hallelujah. Yes. I, may, I may cause this lamb to lay down its life today, but God is able to give me yes. ten more lambs. Yes. God is able to give me more animals than I've ever had before. When Abel offered that sacrifice, he did not see it as costing him. Amen. Oh my Lord. I'm going I'm to go there because I'm in the mood today. So a lot of people, boy, I mean, you talk about tithing, they just have a fit. Oh, I mean to yeah. tell you, they just want to they just want to butcher the preacher because he's not supposed to talk about tithing. Well, the problem is, if you get your hair in a knot every time the preacher talks about tithing, I'm going to tell you why. Because you view tithing as a sacrifice. Yeah. And you view it, listen to me now, as costing you something. Yeah. Guess what? If that's how you tithe, it does cost you something. Yes, amen. Because if you don't tithe with faith, oh my Lord, it is not an acceptable sacrifice. Wow, amen. Yeah. People who tithe and who have experienced the blessing of God in their lives because of their tithing yes, know. Amen. It don't cost me nothing to tithe. Amen. Hallelujah. God said, Amen. if I'll do it, he'll bless me. Amen. God promised, try me now in this and right. see. Amen. If I will not pour out upon you a blessing which you cannot receive. Amen. That's what he said. People say, oh, I won't give sacrificially to the church because they need money. They need, they're trying to put a new roof on the building. They're... The pastor, they're trying to help the pastor. I'm going to give sacrificially. But oh boy, is it going to hurt? It sure is. Because your sacrifice is meaningless in the eyes of God. Yes. Pastor, what? But I did it. Yes, but the Word of God said not to give begrudgingly. Yes, amen. My Word. What else the Word does? It's not to give out of need. Why? I'll tell you why. Because an acceptable sacrifice not only has to be excellent, it also has to be with faith. Yeah. If you're going to give without faith, you might as well not give at all. If you can't give knowing that God is able to restore to you yeah. multiple times over what you're giving. Yeah. Amen. I've told the story before, I'll tell it again. Somebody hadn't heard it. I came to Texas as a 16-year-old kid. I'd gone back to Connecticut briefly and came back. And when I came back, I came back literally just about flat broke. I was so I had so little money in my pocket, I didn't know what I was going to do. 
And I stayed, the first I arrived back in Texas on a Saturday, I stayed at a motel in Haltom City outside of Fort Worth on Saturday night. I went to church on Sunday. I brought my suitcase with me. I had nowhere to stay. I had nothing. And I had all of $20 roughly in my pocket. And Brother Gillum brought two married couples up to the front of the church who had just gotten married. And he said, we're going to take a love offering for these two couples. If everybody will just walk up around the front and hug their neck and said, we're going to put a plate on the, the altar in front of them. And if you'll just put whatever you can in to help these young couples as they get started in life. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my spirit and said, You've got a $5 bill in your wallet. You've got three singles in your wallet. I want you to give five to one and three to the other. And I said, Lord, if I do that, I'm going to be left with like $10. He said, that's what I want you to do. I said, okay, Lord. And I got in that line, and I went up to Tommy, and I put $3 in one offering plate, hugged their necks, put $5 in the other offering plate, hugged their neck, went back to my seat. See, I know God is able. Yes, amen. I know God is able to abundantly, to do exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever ask or think. So I saw it as a sacrifice. Because after all, I, I didn't have any plans. I had nowhere to stay. I had nothing lined up. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even afford another night at the motel. But I gave it anyway the end of the service. I told Brother Gillum I wanted to stay at the church and pray a while. If I could, I said, I'm, I'm in a position where I need to pray. I didn't tell him what. I just yeah. He knew I'd just come back, but he didn't know I had nowhere to stay or I had nothing lined up. I said, Brother, I need to stay at the church a while and pray. He said, okay, Chuck. And he shook my hand, and when he shook my hand, he had something in between his thumb and his palm, and he shook my hand and that's called a Pentecostal handshake. And when somebody tries to bless you that way, you're supposed to just take it. You don't say anything. You don't even acknowledge. Just take it. So I took it. He said, go get yourself something to eat after a while. And he showed me how to lock the church up if I left the building. He said, but you go get yourself something to eat after a while. Don't just sit here in the church and pray till church tonight. You go get something to eat. Well, after Brother Gillum left the building... I looked down at my palm and unfolded those bills and there was a five and three singles. It's like God was trying to say, see, I'm trying to show you if you'll just do what I tell you, I'll take care of you. That's right. You ain't going to lose nothing. You're not going to be out nothing. You see, sacrifice requires not only that it be excellent, that it be something of genuine value, something of genuine worth, but if that sacrifice is to be a more excellent sacrifice. If it's to be a sacrifice that is acceptable to God, it must also be offered in faith. Yes, amen. Romans chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. Listen here now. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by one man's Excuse me, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. There's another key to the sacrifice of Christ that applies to us as believers today as well. Sacrifice has got to be in obedience. Mm -hmm. There are times God will ask you to do something, and if God asks you to give ten, He don't mean give five. Yes, amen. 
If God tells you to become a missionary, He doesn't mean become an evangelist. Hello, now. Yes, amen. If God tells you to build a church, He don't mean build a doghouse. He means build a church. When God asks, them, you know, I tell people all the time, I, I try to explain to people all the time, you know, my great grandmother, whom I adored, she loved yellow. Yellow was her favorite color in the world. You could bring her anything so long as it was yellow, she would just love it to death. And I swear it had to do with her spirit because she had the brightest, most sunny disposition and most positive attitude of anybody I ever knew. So I think yellow just suited Grandma, you know? Yeah. But when somebody loves yellow, you're pretty ignorant and foolish to constantly bring them blue. <laughs> if you're dating a fella or you're with a lady and they love, you know, yellow flowers <laughs> and Valentine's Day comes and here you come with your red roses. And you give them those red roses and they say, oh, how nice, they're very pretty, I like them. But you just sense something's missing. You sense they're not reacting quite the way you'd like them to react. And you say, well, what's wrong? I, I spent good money on these. I spent a lot of money on these. Well, but honey, I, I just kind of wish they were yellow because I'd like some yellow flowers in the kitchen or I'd like some yellow flowers on the dining room table. Well, these are red, but the red were more expensive. Does the excellence of that sacrifice justify the sacrifice? No. Because you know what they like. Right. What would have really made a hit is if you'd have brought what they asked for, if you'd yes. have brought what they liked. Do you understand yes. what I'm telling Amen. you today? Amen. This is what God desires of us. God don't ask anything more of us than He asks of us. But what He asks of us, He desires that we do. Yes, Jesus said, this commandment I give unto you, that she love one another. Amen. You can't go around hating everybody in the church, and you can't go around hating everybody in the world, and hating everybody on the planet, and being malicious, and hateful, and mean, and rude, and nasty, and expect that any sacrifice you bring to God, or any sacrifice you offer to God, is going to be acceptable. No, why? Because you don't know how to be obedient. God wants us to do what He's asked us to do. Amen. Sacrifice must be excellent. It must be offered in faith. And it must be offered in response to obedience. By the time the concept of sacrifice was implemented in the Old Testament, it was a commandment. Therefore, it had to be offered in obedience. Now, there were some people who said, I'm not going to spend the money to go buy a dove. I'm not going to spend the money to go buy a lamb. I just won't bother. I just won't do it. There were many people who chose not to obey what God had asked them to do, but the Lord said, you know what's important to me than the sacrifice itself? The obedience is more important to me than the sacrifice. Obedience is more important than sacrifice. Isaiah 53 and 7, he was so pressed, speaking of Jesus in the prophetic, he was so pressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. You know, funny thing about sheep, they're obedient. Yes, amen. They will do whatever their shepherd guides them and directs them to do. If that shepherd is leading them to be sheared, they go in and get sheared. Yep. If that shepherd is leading them to be slaughtered, then they go in and they're slaughtered. Mm -hmm. You don't see them fighting and bucking and kicking every step of the way as they're headed toward the slaughterhouse. Hello right. now. You don't see them fighting and saying, winter's coming, I'll be cold, when they're headed to the shearers. Yeah. No, they obediently go along. They follow the direction that they're given. How many Christians, every time God gives us a direction, every time God speaks to our heart to do something, we're kicking and screaming. Yes, amen. 
We're fighting him. Um, excuse me, honey. We are the sheep. He is the shepherd. Amen. We're not supposed to be kicking and screaming every step of the way. We're supposed to know that whatever he leads us, wherever he takes us, it is for our best. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I look at some people living in our world today who are up there in age, and I mean, they probably have months to live versus years. And I can't help but think to myself, knowing what the Word of God said is coming in the last days, I can't help but think to myself, you know, I kind of, I kind of am jealous of them mm -hmm. because they'll be going home soon enough yeah. and they're not going to have to go through a lot of the junk. Yes, amen. Tommy lost an on a little while ago here. And I thought to myself, bless the hearts, look at all this trash with Trump and yes, the Republicans amen. and what's going on in our nation today. Look at all the stuff she's missing out on. I'd rather right. be shouting on the hills of glory than putting up with this garbage any day of the week. Amen. Say, yes, but if God leads me to the slaughter, I don't want to die. Honey, if God leads me to the slaughter, that means I'm better off then. <laughs> <laughs> Hello now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If God wants to take me home, then it's time for me to go home. Hello right. now. My God, do you believe this thing or don't you believe this thing? Amen. Do you believe there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shut or don't you believe there's a heaven to gain Amen. and a hell to shut? Do you believe there's going to be a glad reunion day or don't Amen. you believe there's going to be a glad reunion day? Do you believe it's going to be a great jubilee in the sky Amen. one day or don't you believe it? Yes. Got Christians in our world today. My grandmother was one of them who was more afraid of death than unbelievers are. here to tell you today, mm -hmm. obedience is an important element in sacrifice. Why was yeah. Jesus the best of the best as the Lamb of God? Because He was willing to be obedient. Just like that sheep. Yeah. That's why He's Amen. called the Lamb of God. Amen. Because that Lamb didn't kick and scream all the way to the cross. Right. That Amen. Lamb didn't kick and scream all the way to the shearers. Do you hear what I'm telling Amen. you now? He was oppressed and He was afflicted, yet He opened not His mouth. He is brought as a Lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before His shearers is dumb, so He openeth not His mouth. One of the most important elements to an acceptable, excellent sacrifice is faith, obedience, and excellence. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2, 6-8, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death Amen. even the death of the cross why did God have to become a man in order to go to the cross so that we could have a sacrifice that was acceptable because there was no human being on this planet right. who could have that much faith and be that obedient. Yes, amen. Right. Never mind the excellence aspect. <laughs> Hebrews 9, 11 through 15, but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building mm -hmm. neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, 
How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purged, purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. This speaks of the excellence of the sacrifice of Christ. Hallelujah. He said the blood of goats and of lambs didn't do it. He said, but you know what? Christ offered himself. You see, no goat just walks up and parks itself on the cutting block and said, all right, chop away, guys. But the Lamb of God did. Amen. He offered Himself. This made His sacrifice the best Amen. of the best. Amen. Because this sacrifice was not only excellent, this sacrifice was Amen. obedient. Obedient Amen. unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. Anyone who has ever signed a waiver to permit a doctor or a hospital to perform surgery mm -hmm. has gone through the process of submitting themselves to a painful procedure, mm -hmm. knowing they're going to have pain and there'll be a long, sometimes difficult recovery process to go through. But in the end, their situation will be far better yes, than amen. it was before they got sick. Hello now. Amen. When my gallbladder decided it wanted all but explode in my body, and I wound up waking up and I felt, I can't even describe the pain that was cutting through my center part of my torso. I felt like I was being cut in half. And I told Tommy in a message, I said, oh, I woke, I must have eaten something wrong or something. I woke up this morning, I'm in some awful pain. So when you get home from work, I may go to the ER, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I literally was doubled over in the bed, it hurt so bad, and I thought about calling an ambulance. I didn't, I didn't know what to do because I wasn't sure what was going on. Never dawned on me, gallbladder, never even went through my head. Yeah. I'm assuming I ate something wrong. When I finally wound up in the hospital and they finally told me that they determined my gallbladder needed to be removed. Yep. I signed that waiver and I submitted myself, didn't I, to those yep. doctors. I submitted myself to those uh, physicians and those surgeons. I submitted myself to the guy who's operating the gas mask. I submitted myself knowing that the process would not be easy. It would not be painless, but in the end I'd be better for it if I tell the yes, truth. Amen. The Lamb of God submitted Himself knowing it would not be easy. Knowing it would not be painless. But understanding in the end, things will be a whole lot better than they were before he started. Hallelujah to God. The Word of God said in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him <laughs> endured the cross, yes, despising the shame. If you think I went into that surgery looking forward to the pain and the agony and the you know weeks and months of weakness and exhaustion that I was going to feel, of course I didn't. You can despise the shame. You can despise the pain. You can despise the process. But yet he still submitted himself unto death. Even the death of the cross. Why? Because he knew what was coming after. That's right. Who for the joy that was set before him <coughs> endured the cross. Amen. Sometimes the sacrifice, when you make sacrifice, you've got to endure. Amen. The process, you may not like the process, but you got to endure it. Yes. 
Because he had enough faith in God to know that on the other side, I'm going to come out as pure gold. Hallelujah. Yes, he may be allowing me to pass through the fire, but he amen. only allows me to pass through the fire so yes, that I amen. can be purified. Glory amen. to God. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, the Word of God reads, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? In other words, if the sacrifices had worked at any point, wouldn't they have stopped offering sacrifices? Yes, amen. Because that the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. So once the sacrifice was offered, if it was a perfect sacrifice, if it was a more excellent sacrifice, if it was the best of the best, then there should have been no more sacrifice necessary. Yes, amen. Paul goes on to say, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not. But a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Yes, amen. See, here's where we're talking about the sacrifice. Why was Jesus the best of the best? Because he was so obedient. He was not just a sacrifice that kicked and screamed all the way, but he was an obedient sacrifice. I have come to do thy will, O God. In the garden he prayed, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yes, thy amen. will be amen. done. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Obedience is necessary if sacrifice is to be acceptable. Verse 8, Hebrews 10. And when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldst not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I am come to do thy will of God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we... Oh, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. Meaning, once the best of the best showed up, Amen. no further sacrifice That's was right. necessary. Amen. My Catholic friend, I'm going to fill you in on a little secret. The Catholic Church is selling you a false bill of goods. Amen. Because every time they celebrate the Mass, they claim that they are sacrificing the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over and over and over Jesus. and over again around the world, millions of times daily, they celebrate what is properly called the sacrifice of the Mass. He was sacrificed once for all. Amen. Once he was sacrificed, Amen. there was no other sacrifice that could even come close in terms of its worthiness. Right. There was Amen. no other sacrifice that could even come close in terms of its excellence. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no other sacrifice that is ever necessary. That's right. And there is no other sacrifice that God will ever receive. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 through 21. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, yes. and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
to wit, which is a nice way of saying, in other words, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, right. and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. In other words, he's offered reconciliation through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now he's given us the job of preaching this message so that it can be offered and received. Yes, amen. So he did this, now he's given us the job of preaching this so people can receive it. So they can take part in the reconciliation that God has offered. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I said at the beginning of my message today, if you don't understand this, you'll never be able to celebrate it like you ought to. If you don't understand this, you'll never be able to shout about it like you ought to be able to shout about it. Yes, amen. God had to become the sacrifice because there was not a man on this planet qualified amen. Amen. to do what God alone could do. In order for the excellence to be present in the sacrifice, God had to do it. But listen to me. In order for the faith to be present in the offering of that sacrifice, God alone had to do it. Yes, amen. Did you hear what I said? Yes, amen. Who could look past the cross to see what was coming afterwards and oh say, God. I have confidence that what I see afterwards is going to come to pass and not yes, say, I'm going to die and stay dead. Oh, Jesus, amen. God could. God had the ability, hallelujah, amen. to look beyond the cross and say, I know what's coming afterwards. Amen. The Word of God said it was not possible that yes, death amen. should keep Christ. Why? Because of who He was. That's right, because God was in Christ reconciling the world unto yes, Himself. Amen. You can kill the body of yes, Christ, amen. but you can't kill the Spirit. Amen. The Spirit that dwelled within the man was the Spirit of Almighty God. Amen. And when that Spirit decided, it's time to come back to life. Oh, it's amen. time for me to reanimate yes. that Glory to God. Jesus. Who could be obedient enough to be an acceptable sacrifice? God. But see, now, now listen, here's, here's where the catch comes in. This is where you're going to really like this message. Part of the responsibility for an acceptable sacrifice is in the sacrifice itself. In other words, the excellence, that is the responsibility of the sacrifice. The faith and the obedience is the responsibility of the one offering the sacrifice. You ever wonder why the Word of God said that Christ offered Himself? You ever wonder why the language is used throughout Scripture? That he offered. It doesn't say anybody else offered him in sacrifice. Right. Nowhere in the Word of God do you read that anybody else was in on the transaction. He offered himself. You see, Amen. listen now, because I want you to get this. I'm almost done. I want you to understand this today. Jesus Christ is not only the sacrifice. He is also the high priest that carried the sacrifice into the Holy of Holies. 
to Jesus. Hallelujah. Who could be both the sacrifice? Yes, glory. Yes, Who could be the sacrifice? And be the offer of that sacrifice only God. Amen. See, there ain't a man on this planet can be two things at one time. There's not a man on this planet who can be a lion and a lamb. Amen. There's not a man on this planet who can be the sacrifice as well as the high priest who offers the sacrifice. Amen. Jesus Christ is the lion of the yes. tribe of Judah. Yes, Jesus is. Christ is the lamb of God Amen. slain from the foundations of the world. Jesus Christ is yes. the sacrifice. He is also the high priest Amen. that ascended on high and entered into the holy of holies and presented his own blood as the offering. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Woo! The best of the best. Now do you get it? Now do you understand why God had to do it the way God did it? Amen. The best of the best. Because sacrifice requires excellence. Sacrifice requires obedience. Sacrifice Amen. requires faith. Jesus, Lord. Sacrifice requires something of that one being sacrificed as well as the one offering the sacrifice. Amen. And God said, there ain't but one entity in the entire universe yes. Amen. who can be both the sacrifice, the offering, yep. and be the one offering the sacrifice. Yes. Amen. Jesus Christ said before Pilate. Jesus. Pilate said, don't you know I've got your life in my hands? Don't you know I have the power over oh, whether you live or die? And the Lord said, oh honey, I've got the power to lay down my life. Right. Amen. And I've got the power to take it up again. Hallelujah. He didn't say my father has the power to take it up again. He said I've got the power to take it. You don't know who you're talking to. That's right. Amen. God is in this Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Because not only am I the sacrifice, I'm also the one who offers the sacrifice. I'm also the high priest. Hallelujah. God gave the best of the best yes, so that you and I today could know Him, so that we could walk intimately in fellowship with Him. Yes. He loved us enough to go through the process. People say, well, that isn't that big a process. He's God oh, after all. God. Really? I know people couldn't humble themselves to get down and wash another person's feet in the foot washing service. Never mind be God and humble yourself yes, amen. and become a servant. Yes, right. amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself in a physical form to experience death and not a, not a you know, going to, to dying in your sleep death either. Yes. A painful, miserable, murderous death. To have your friends turn on you. To have people that once worshipped you suddenly curse you. You don't think that was quite a process for God to go through because He loved you? Yes, amen. I'm here to tell you today, LGBT believer, I want you to know God offered the best of the best because He knew good and well you and I couldn't do it. If we could have done it, it would have been done. Yes, amen. It couldn't be done. The only way that we could ever be saved, the only way we could ever walk in relationship with Him, the only way we could ever know righteousness was not through any effort of our own. Amen. And I got news for you. God could deliver you tomorrow from every evil and every ungodly thing in your life and every sinful thing in your life. And I got news for you. The following morning, you'd pick up something new. Yes, amen. Hello Amen. now, because as long as you're in a physical body, Amen. you're subject to sin. Don't think That's any right. different. Amen. But I'm here to tell you today, God offered us the best of the best. Amen. Not only was He the sacrifice, He was also the high priest who offered the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me this afternoon?